1983. To mark its centenary, STC, a manufacturer of communications equipment, decides to explain the technology of communications to the public, especially to school children. It will give the latest in the series of Faraday lectures, created in memory of Michael Faraday, who made it possible to generate electricity. But the company is determined this will be no ordinary lecture. Its theme will be light, from beacon fires to optical fibers. We know you do a lot of work in the theater, in sort of trade shows, presenting products. And what we want to do is to see whether we can achieve a balance between that style of fairly dramatic presentation and a content that is essentially technical. Also a content that, if you like, is sort of socially important because it's actually about something which will perhaps change people's lives. So uh, really we've come to you as a as a lighting man originally to say here we are with a show about light right. let's see whether we can't do something dramatic and, and maybe unusual with light right. when we run the show now whatever we do craziness with lights and effects or whatever the speaker the poor human being who has to deliver this thing has to be the star of the show absolutely It's basically a technical lecture, Brian, but it's been done since 1924 in the good old days, as some would see it. It was very much one man standing there, reading his own words, talking technical topics, and what we want to try and do is do it in a much more interesting way than usual. Chris but who is it for? Is it for sixth formers who know physics, or...? It's for fifth and sixth formers, and you can assume they'll know a little bit. Yeah. Because they'll be there as school parties, and they'll probably come from physics classes, maths classes. But nonetheless, there will be some, will there, who perhaps don't know very much physics. I mean, like me. I would think the adult audience are going to be the ones who know the least, in fact. So what we need to do is to get it into the kind of language that they're used to, although it's about technical things that mm. they're not used to. In other words, any technical terms we're going to have to define very carefully. And by that, I mean don't define them in more technical terms, but define them in ordinary English. about light. Light is part of the electromagnetic spectrum, but the visible bit is, well, I've got seven principal colours. And what happens if we took that idea of a light box and sat the speaker on a big light box filling the stage, and they divided that up into seven sections, so it went across the colours of the spectrum. Ah, and maybe more fun would be to do it in a sort of checkerboard, chessboard type thing. Instead of black, white, we could do any colour, any colour, any colour in each square, so we could have sort of a kaleidoscopic effect. Sounds nice. We have our screen, of course, with the AV. And over the top, we could hang a large mirror. Instead of putting the lights up in the air, why don't we put them on the floor as well? It's all about light, so let's have lots of lights showing. If you are trying to move the lights around every day to a different place, it's much easier to put them on the floor than just to hang them up in the air. And we light our fella by lighting into the mirror and down to him. Into the mirror and down to him. We've got to hang this mirror somehow. Most of these halls don't have any facilities for hanging, do they? So that's got to be self-contained. We'll put it on some sort of flagpole, mast, elegant mast, sort of chrome or something. It's Italian furniture. It could then go up and down and could adjust its angle for different effects. A set built from steel and aluminium, assembled and taken down in 15 cities throughout the UK. It's 
How about the floor? How about the sort of detail of the floor? Um, We've got to move it real quickly, haven't we? It's got to... It's got to take the weight. It's got the track going across it. Right. And be in small enough... small enough pieces to get into a truck. Right. Without creating a packing problem. Right. So, I thought probably if we... If we made it in a series of stringers that go up and down, dividing into the seven spectrum spaces... Yeah. Make these solid pieces, the full 15 foot 6 long, right. and dropped in between, like on clips, just pop in spacers. Clever. With all the correct wiring in it. Uh huh. So that could be just a, a swift hook up between each spacer and stringer. Clever. So you could wire that lot permanently to yeah. the back. Yeah. And these splitting probably down the centre, right. those wiring that way. Right. Stage left to stage left and stage right to stage right, and then run the cables down there, mm -hmm. which gives us a sort of egg box once it's finished. Mm -hmm. Very solid. It won't tend to walk that right. way, it won't tend to twist. And how's it all fit together? Something very fast. No nuts and bolts, no mm -hmm. fixing. Some, a clip of some sort, mm -hmm. which uh, we'll have to devise. Mm -hmm. Something simple. Okay. The mirror, I think we should do as the same size as the stage floor. So you're saying you wanted the beginning so that when it was dropped down, all you got was blackness. Um, if we... Around the, around the edge of this, I think it should have a frame of some sort. And I thought probably if we did it out of the same tube as the mast, so I reckon six inch tube, that sort of size tube, a fairly thick wall for the masts. Around the mirror, we can use the same thing, um, much more lightweight, thinner wall, plastic even. Drop down onto the stage, and the same again around the edge of the stage. And so when the whole lot sandwiched together, you just get two rings, and that's all you see. And when they open up, you'll see the gap between them. The mirror itself, I think, is going to have to be in panels, because if we try to stretch a sheet that size every day, it's going to go out of trim, you're going to get all sorts of nasty wrinkles and things every day and you really won't be able to avoid that. So possibly six or eight panels which fit front to back and sit into clips so that they line up exactly and they just drop into place. It's picked up inside of the offstage edges because the masts have to be locked into the stage floor and therefore the tops when they come over on the walking stick uh, we'll give you about three foot inside of that, which is probably to our advantage because we can join the frame of the mirror at that point. And what I propose is a very short sequence which announces the title of the show, The Photon Connection. Which, the best thing I can do is to talk through the storyboard I've done. We have a very crisp sound effect to start this AV, at which point the screen from black and the set being black, total blackout mm. in the auditorium, a green grid appears right across the base of the screen and starts to animate as the music gains in momentum. At which point there's a sound effect and we see the sky beginning to light up and a sun rising. This sun continues to rise, at which point the voiceover comes in with the music. It is light which enables us to see. In the world of the future, it is light which will enable us to communicate and to understand. What I suggest at this point is we get a sort of highly stylized modern city greying out of the grid. A giant, almost abstract shape appears. The music then grows in intensity and speed and changes, and we get a sort of, uh, almost a typewriter effect. Mm. And this lettering emerges to reveal the lecture title. And the very last thing to happen is that laser effect comes out of the phone vibrating. Mm. At which point, what I suggest we do is then kill the screen to black 
simultaneously with another loud sound effect mm. on the soundtrack and let the set take over and the set begins to light up so that we've got the link. It's got to shake the room, hasn't it, really, Justin? Very much so. I, th I think it's got to be as deep. Yeah. Maybe we need more possible. than one, Steve, so that they modulate. It's pretty yeah, nice. Yeah, it's modulating different effects, isn't it? Yeah. It's too low, then. Or something like that. Yeah. Can we make it even heavier than that, or will we get that effect by... Okay. Well, I think by if, by if we've got more than one, they're, they're going to modulate together quite nicely. Yeah. Okay, well, that seems like a sensible starting point. Right, okay, now. If you can rewind and go from that point. Then you have your clever stuff, and the bloke comes on in his wheelchair over you getting him in. Right. And then he says, and he's quite conversational. When men are within touching distance, it is easy for them to keep in touch. One speaks, the other listens. Further apart, one shouts, the other strains to hear. Out of earshot, one waves, the other waves back, uncertain of the message. Over longer distances, they need assistance. Now, men have long known that light can be seen from afar. They lit a chain of beacons to signal the fall of Troy. They were still at it 3,000 years later to signal the approach of the Spanish Armada. They even did it again to signal the wedding of Charles and Diana, but most of us watched that on television, and the fireworks too. If you see images of people, we very readily identify them with stereotypes. Should they be wearing a suit? Should they be wearing a T-shirt? What age should they be? what sex should they be. So any kind of depiction of that sort, there is a problem in, it is distracting from the abstract nature of the introductory sequence of the script. So after much discussion, I've come up with the, the idea of using two mime artists to depict the opening sequence. Um, I'd like to use a man and a woman uh, dressed in the typical mime artist costume. Oh, that's nice. Mm. 18 slide projectors. We're going to have to advance onto the first set of speaker support, Tony. 2,000 computer controlled cues. Some of those pictures at the very beginning of the sequence. All right. Stop there. Right, we're going to take that one out and put in a new one. Perhaps if you can go back a queue, and I can see that. Okay. I'll run it from the beginning of that section. Right. Remember that they've just seen the reveal, and the screen is black, mm -hmm. and uh, probably the speaker has got a a little bit of applause as he appears on stage and he launches straight into the script when men are within touching distance it's easy for them to keep in touch one speaks the other listens further apart one shouts the other strains to hear out of earshot one waves the other waves back uncertain of the message over longer distances we need assistance Men have long known that light can be seen from afar. They lit a chain of beacons to signal the fall of Troy. They were still at it 3,000 years later to signal the approach of the Spanish Armada. They even did it again to signal the wedding of Charles and Diana. But most of us watched that on television and the fireworks too. John's still well. Yeah. The film is still the wrong way around. Right. And it, it matters because in one place there's actually words on the screen and it looks wrong. The, the smoke in the laser, yes. we've got the message. Yes, Could, and Couldn't see the light at all. Absolutely, and we're going to fade the lines off, fellas, while you're talking about the laser. So we're just going to have the laser on, so you're going to be in the dark, OK? Yeah. So as it slides in, it will be out. Yeah. So in, in effect, we won't really be able to see it. Yeah. Right. OK. 
Jen, I'm not, I'm not mm. sure. The lighting cue where we say we can use light alone, we have a lot of flashing floor. Mm. Going on too I'm long. not clear whether he's waiting for you or you're waiting for I'm him. I'm waiting at the for moment. him. Ah. Right. I'm waiting for a line okay. Because I felt the speakers were both waiting yeah, for the light to stop. Yeah. No. So I think we haven't understood yeah. each other okay. there. Right. I, take, I take everything Fine. from line cues from you, yeah. except okay. an actual physical yeah. movement. Half that length. Seventy-five, please, Benny. Sixty-seven on its own. And sixty-eight. Thank you very much. But we're not running it this time. Right. Then stand back s slightly. So that and it, can... it will go off. Mm -hmm. So we'll take it off, Jack, and then we'll go for it. We'll go for a rehearsal of it. <coughs> yes, it lines up, John. Hmm. What's all six look like? That's the one. You ready? Okay, one. Weeks of careful rehearsal, then a final run-through before okay, the first right. of over 100 performances. Okay, we'll stand by, let's start. By the end of the tour, 100,000 people will know a little more about a technology that may change the way they live. And all the bits thereafter, sort of chopping around inside the floor have made more intense and bright so it's all got more punch. Right. It's it still, isn't quite so boring right. as it, it was. Right. It, it needs to be a pacier than the That's last right. time we saw That's it. That's right. We've had a we've had a go at it. So we've got Q starting a bit sooner yeah. than they did yeah. at the beginning. Yeah. And it's partly also practice. I mean Jenny just needs to do it a few times as Smashing. well. Smashing. You know. A V standing by. Right, okay. And TAC running, AV running, all projectors running, okay. Within touching distance, it's easy for us to keep in touch. One speaks, another listens. Further apart, one shouts, the other strains to hear. Out of earshot, one waves, the other waves back, uncertain of the message. Over longer distances, we need assistance. Men have long known that light can be seen from afar. They lit a chain of beacons to signal the fall of Troy. 
and they were still at it 3,000 years later to signal the approach of the Spanish Armada. They even did it again to signal the wedding of Charles and Diana. But most of us watch that on television and the fireworks too.